turn with me to the book of John. That is St. John. That is the final book of the Gospels. I want to thank God for our newly developed um, outreach team that have been going out on the weekends and passing out tracks and invi inviting people to church. It's been a wonderful, wonderful thing. I'm just with the understanding that there's some things about church that wasn't broken. Amen. So we don't need to fix it or alter it. And so we thank God. I think First Lady already said it. We thank God for all our visitors who are here on today. We pray, oh God, if you don't have a, a, a spiritual home, that after today that you would consider total deliverance so we can meet your spiritual needs. Once again, St. John chapter number 21, beginning with verse 14. Once again, stand at this as a custom for the reading of God's holy word. That is John chapter 21, beginning with verse number 14. If you have it, say praise the Lord. And this is the beginning of God's holy word. So as it's written, so shall I read. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. And after that, he was risen from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. You may be seated in the presence of our most holy God. If I can take this time, man, and present to you a title for this particular message, it is simply when my past tries to call me back. When my past tries to call me back. It, it is important for us to to understand our, our Pentecostal genealogy as far as the 50 days that we recognize from the resurrection of Jesus Christ to the falling of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number two. Um, it's very important for us to understand to, to properly uh, use the the timelines that is given that we really should use Luke and Acts because most of those that are uh, theologians if you will will call Luke Acts 1 and Acts Acts 2 being that Acts was written by Luke. So those two books actually connect each other, even though that the book of John is in between those two. Because we are off next week, um, it would be a perfect time to connect those two scriptures um, and prepare us for when we come back, it'll be June the 5th. And June the 5th, we'll be celebrating Pentecostal Sunday. 
uh, which for us that is a high, that means we will have a high time in the Lord because it is the Holy Ghost which was the promise that Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for which was those 10 days and so what I've tried to do is capitalize on the 40 days why Jesus was still here because it is very important to me to understand that Jesus could have left from the grave and had been escorted into heaven and man as we know it would not have seen the physical appearance of Jesus and so we have to ask ourselves why was it necessary for Jesus to be seen among not only his disciples, but his followers. We find out that, that Jesus had appeared eight times to his disciples within 40 days. But there was several other appearances that he made to others. The Bible said that he was seen among 500. He was seen among Cephas and others. But it was very important that he spent many appearances for those who had followed him for three and a half years would have been his disciples. Clearly, man, that it lets us know that this was a, a trouble and trying time for the disciples after being disappointed and uh, uh, being attacked, if you will, for following Jesus. Uh, I'm so glad that Jesus decided to stay around for a little while because it assured us of life after death. Had Jesus not rose and allowed there to be witnesses of his resurrection, we would be hoping that there was life after death. But because of his appearance, we have John who is able to write Thessalonians chapter number 4 and 17 that let us know that there is a great getting up morning which we as saints call the rapture. Paul told us that we don't all sleep. Oh God. Amen. Saints don't die. Amen. They just, they just sleep for a while. And to the sound of trumpets. This is one reason why you want to be saved. Because sinners die. And saints sleep. We are removed from our earthly vessels. Which we call bodies. And we are placed in the bosom of Abraham. Until it is time for that great getting up morning. Where Paul tells us those that are dead or sleep, they shall get up first. And those that remain shall be caught up with him to be with him forever. And so we find ourselves with one of the benefits of his resurrection is to allow us to know that life as we know it is not the life that he died for us to have. He said, you might have life, but this, this is this life. And then he said, and then that more abundant. And that's the life to come. And so it's, it's very important that Jesus not only said what he said, but he backed it up. He was the first partaker. The Bible calls him the first partaker of the fruits of death. He, man, he, he took up on uh, that process and rose from it to show us that we have an option uh, that that dying or sleeping is not the option but where you go is an option and so it's very important that we see what he's trying to do in these last 40 days before he is uh, escorted 
and the disciples are left for 10 days. Here is very important that I try to combine as much as I can on this afternoon to get us ready for Pentecostal Sunday. Because there's some, there's some key functional points that I would like to delineate from the excitement of resurrection. That God understands us in our humanity that frustration and disappointment can sometimes get the best of us when we don't recognize when we have been traumatized by life. That, that just because you are a saint of the most high God, it does not mean that you will not experience the attacks of life. Uh, church is not a hiding place, it's a worshiping place. It doesn't immune you from hurts and pains. It doesn't immune you from being crying or sickness or being attacked. It doesn't even immune you from death. And so we have to understand what, what this sanctified place of gathering is really for. And so we find ourselves here understanding that just because you are in church, it doesn't mean that you are partakers of it. Like, this is not a safety place. You don't get a badge of honor because you came. Because here we find out that the scripture starts off in 14 that this is the third time that Jesus has appeared to his disciples. You would think after spending three and a half years with Jesus... That first of all, he would not have to show up because I believed what he said when he said after the third day he shall resurrect himself. But just in case I had a little doubt, the Bible says that he has now seen them three times. I don't think it should have taken them three times to understand that God has just done something that no one else has done, which is resurrect himself from the dead. But it lets me know that life can traumatize you so bad that you can reject the inevitable by putting yourself in a position of being paralyzed by life. We find here now, because it was last week, we found out Thomas had been paralyzed to the point that he was upset that Jesus had not knocked on his door and told him he had been resurrected. And he said, unless I put my hand in his print, and you know the story, he said, I won't believe and here we find now Peter, you know Peter, Peter, uh, according to Matthew chapter number 17, it seems like Jesus has promoted Peter because after coming out of Caesarea Philippi, you know the story, he says to them, who do men say that I am? And, and it was the disciples who said, some said Jeremiah, and some said Elias, and some said John the Baptist. And Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? And, and while they all was quiet, it was Peter who stepped up and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, now, um, I know that you don't know that by gnosko that means experience but my father revealed it to you what i will do is give you points because you had an ear to hear and he said from this time i shall no longer call you simon bar jonah meaning son of jonah simon being here he says i will call you peter Peter meaning stone. He says now 
we're going to move on from here. We find out that a fall can cause you to lose position in God. And, and, and the same thing that happens to Peter happens to Adam in the garden. Because we know that it was Eve that ate of the fruit. And the Bible says that and, and Adam was with her. And, and he took and he ate of to the point where the Bible says God came to the Eve of the garden looking for Adam. He says, Adam, Adam, where are you? Amen. The Bible says, Adam said, I'm hiding. He said, why would you do that? He said, because I'm naked. He said, who told you you were naked? And you know this story, amen. They were, they were removed from the garden because of the fall. I gave him an analogy earlier because it, it, it seems to me that sometimes church folk Think just because you have a relationship with God that when you repent or you tell on yourself uh, that settles the score but I have to tell you the truth what it really does it allows God not to take you out because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death but what we have to tell you is that you will suffer a penalty my god uh, amen and 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 suffering a penalty gives you a way out amen because many of us amen have have been stopped by police officers amen that have pulled us over and and mr officer friendly comes to the window and 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 you immediately amen you uh, put on your best manters and you say officer amen uh, did i do something Man, the officer says, yes. Uh, did you see the light or uh, the stop sign behind you? Or did you notice that you might have been going excessive in your mileage? Uh, who, me, Mr. the officer? Amen. Uh, yes, I, well, I am so sorry. I was, you know, not really paying attention. Uh, this has never really happened to me before. Amen. I promise you, Mr. Officer, will be a little bit better uh, paying attention next time and it seems like the officer walks back to the a man car after clearing your license and after clearing your registration and after clearing your insurance amen they come and you think that they're going to let you off and then they hand you this yellow slip Amen. And you look at it and you say, what is this? Well, you can settle it in court. You thought because of your best manners and, and even the fact that you accepted the fact that you might have went a little bit over the speed limit. Why would he still give you a ticket, amen? Well, we know really what they can do, amen, is have your car towed. Oh, my God. So sometimes a Penalty is a good thing because you don't necessarily get the, the, the whole blunt of the matter, amen. And so we find ourselves sometime coming to church where we say, Lord, yes, I messed up. I'm sorry, Lord, I messed up. And then when we get the penalty, we're trying to figure out why would I get a penalty after I repented because death is really the sentence. I wish I had about five folk up in here, amen. So, so really what I'm trying to tell you is just don't don't do it. Bible says now we have Peter, a man that is in the garden. Now you know he has been elevated, a man, but now he is in the garden. And the Bible says that before they get ready to go, Jesus tell him, a man. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, you're gonna deny me three times. You heard the story. He says, "No, I would die for you." He said, "No, no, no. What's gonna happen is before, a man, I even see a blood drop. You're gonna deny." me three times and to allow you to know that the countdown is at three the cock will crow to let you know on the third time you've done what I said you would do the Bible says after they're over Jesus says let them go and you know this story the first time there is a young lady who comes as a girl and and she looks at him and says mommy mommy isn't he one of the one he says no I'm not a part of that I'm not with them the second time a woman comes and said 
wait a minute, you look like one of them followers. The Bible says she, he cussed her out my God and, and then a third woman came and said you must be one of those he says I am not he amen and the cock crowed oh God uh, and we find ourselves they were scattered from there now we understand that, that God shows himself on two separate occasions after the resurrection they already know he has risen uh, where well, we find ourselves in chapter number 21 uh, beginning in the verse first we find out something has happened to Peter I would say that he is traumatized, he's depressed, he's frustrated, and, and everything that comes along with letting God down. To, to the point now, he get a couple of his homeboys and said, we're getting ready to go a fishing, my God. And here he is now returning back to the lifestyle that he had before Jesus said, come. It allows me to let you know that it is easy for you to find yourself being who you used to be after being traumatized or let down or experienced an attack. I told them earlier that it's very important that you understand that just because you have the Holy Ghost, it doesn't mean that you have been rid of the old you. I told them earlier that we was thought that the old you was dead, but the old you is not dead. You still have access to the old you you know the you that used to cuss the one that used to smoke the one that used to drink the one that used to get high amen but what happens is is when you get the Holy Ghost it gives you power that you can override the old you desires that's why you need the Holy Ghost because the old you is just waiting to be used but the Holy Ghost can cause the old you to behave because you have dunamis. And so we find ourselves here with Peter who has now returned back to his old self because he's showing us he's going back to the things he used to do. And you know misery loves company so he takes some people with him. They get on a ship and we find out that now they have been toiling all day. And all night Jesus comes and says have you caught any fish? They said no we haven't and we've been here all day. He says take your net and throw it on the other side. You know the story. They caught so much fish that they had to bring little boats in to help him. But now Peter recognizes the voice. It lets me know that even though you have fallen you will never lose the voice of God because you need to have the voice of God to be able to call you back after you have fallen. I was sad that he took up all his stuff and swam all the way to the shore where Jesus was. Now we fast forward and we find ourselves at dinner time with all of the disciples and yes, Jesus. Jesus looks at Peter and this is what throws me off Lady Benson. He doesn't call him Peter now. He calls him Simon and it lets me know that he is no longer talking to the spiritual side of Peter. He is now talking to the carnal side of Peter because now he is acting carnally and he can't talk spiritual to a carnal man. He says Simon. The word Simon means hear. He said, can you hear me Simon? Do you still love me? more than these what he was talking about is the rest of these carnal folk do you love me like you used to he said yes Lord I love you he asked him again do you love me the first time he says yes Lord I love you he said if you love me feed my lambs what he is doing he is tapping into the past of Peter bringing Peter to the understanding the reason why I ask you do you love me the first time because it is synonymous to the first time somebody came to you and identified you with me you told 
them that you didn't know me. And the little one who said that was a young woman, which is synonymous to being a lamb. He says, Peter, do you love me? Which is the second time, which is synonymous to this time that he denied him. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep, which identifies the older woman that he had just cussed out. He says, Peter, do you love me? He calls him Simon again because he's talking to the carnal man that is backslidden, finding his own ways. He didn't win back to being everything that God has saved him. And the Bible says that he says one more again. He says, Simon, do you love me for the third time? Which is indignant to the third time that the car crow that he denied his Savior. And he was so vexed. The Bible said he was grieved because he now knows that Jesus knows that he was in a carnal state. He was grieved to the point where he was mad. Now you got to ask me who would be mad with Jesus talking to them? Savior, God, the slain lamb. And you got the nerve to be mad at Jesus. He tells Peter, he said, if you really love me, feed my sheep. And some of you know that he goes down through the Greek alphabet of love. Starting off with filios. He lets them know, do we have a friend type relationship? Then he goes to Eros, where he talks about a dysfunctional love. Then he drops down and he goes to Agape, where he's talking about, do you have unconditional love for me? And Peter says, Lord, thou knowest that I didn't jack up. Lord, thou knowest I didn't backslid. You know it that I didn't cut folk out. You know I messed up, tore up from the floor up. And now, since Peter has told on himself, God says, Peter, feed my sheep. Now that you've admitted that you messed up, now that you admit that you're frustrated, now that you admit that you're depressed, that you're oppressed, now I can work with you. You gotta see here when you find yourself in a dysfunctional place, your past has an opportunity to creep up back in your life and pull you back into depression, into oppression, into sickness, into hating, into unforgiveness. Can I tell you, God wants you to know in this season, don't let your past pull you back to who you used to be. Don't let your past pull you back to smoking and drinking, cussing and fussing, hollering and screaming. Open up your mouth. Don't go back to smoking weed. Don't go back to new ports and clues. Don't go back to the wine drinking, the cussing and fussing. You've come too far to where you started. And I don't believe that God brought you this far to leave you. Do me a favor. Find a neighbor and say, neighbor, don't let your old voice pull you back and be 
who you used to be before you got saved, before you got sanctified, before you got filled. Open up your mouth and tell somebody, say, neighbor, don't let your past call you back. Don't let your past bring you and put you you, block you, and hold you hostage in your mind. Don't let your past pull you back from the things that you let go. When you get mad with your mama all over again, get mad at your daddy all over again, get mad at your ex all over again. Get mad at your children all over again. Get mad at yourself all over again. Open up your mouth and tell the devil, get out of my ear with my past. All things are passed away. And behold, I can become new. Open up your mouth and tell the devil, say, oh, devil, Mr. Devil, I refuse to go back where I come from. Say, thank you, Jesus, that he's exposed the devil to you. Don't go back being how you used to be. Don't go back being being stubborn, being frustrated, being depressed, being oppressed. Don't go back to drinking and smoking, eating edibles, drinking skittles. I wish I had somebody in here that'll help me break every stronghold. Help me pull out a demon. Every choke hold. Loose your hold, devil. Break every chain. Pull every fatter. And tear the spirit. And cut every demon. Set them free. Set them loose. Let them go. And tell the devil, I've come too far. 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 I'm not perfect, but I've come too far. I've come too far. So 
somebody shout, I've come too far. You don't know, like I know, I've come too far. You don't know, like I know, I've come too far. change. I got to get past the hurt. I got to get past the attack. I got to get past the assignment where the devil tried to take me out. I got to get past the sickness where the devil trying to handicap me. I got to get past the sibling rivalry. I got to get past my daddy issues. I got to get past my mama issues. I got to get past my baby daddy issues. I got to get past my baby mama issues. I got to get past my social anxieties. I got to get past, I got to get past some stuff that's got me listening to my past I gotta close the door on the voice that's trying to pull me back into my past Find another name and say name like your Pentecostal. Say oh name. Come on and help me find a name and say oh name. I'm not perfect, but I got power. Tell your neighbor, I'm not trying to be perfect. If I Power to live right, power to talk right, power to walk right, power to love right, power to forget right. Put your sanctified hands together. Said, put your sanctified hands together. I knew something was wrong when Jesus reverted back to calling him Simon. When he had just elevated him to Peter. And I can hear Jesus saying, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, if it acts like a duck, then it's Simon. It allows me to know that Jesus don't fake looking at you like you saved when you're acting carnal. He calls it how he sees. Says, since you want to act like Simon then I'm going to call you Simon and really what he was saying can't you hear yourself Simon means here 
Can you hear yourself sounding like your daddy? Because listen, earlier he says, my father was talking to you. Now he says, your father is talking to you. The voice of your past can serenade you into dysfunction. And I have you thinking that a dysfunctional behavior is okay because that's just the way I am. That might be the way you are, but God died for change. That's why you have to be born again. Because he's not trying to change who you are. He's trying to give you rebirth. So we don't have to fool around with who you used to be. When you can be who he wants you to be. And you don't have to untangle that mess. Do me a favor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, do not listen to the voice from your past. It's a trick. And I want you to know that Peter was in a backslidden state. We use that word in the church because it's not really a biblical word. But it's a nice politically correct church word to say you about to go to hell. And I'm at an age where I don't care if you believe it or not because it's true anyhow. How many of you know you don't have to believe for it to be true? People are like, I don't believe the Bible. They say, don't make it not true. It just means you don't believe it. But it's true anyhow. How many things that you know is true that you still got the jury out on it, but it's still true? You don't have to agree with something for it to be true. It don't need your stamp of approval for it to be true. It don't need you to validate it for it to be true. That's why Jesus tells them in John in the beginning, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light, and no man gets around me. I care how you feel and what you think. He sets that straight in the very beginning that I don't need you to validate my word. Stand to your feet all over the house. Being in church don't mean you stop being human. You still have to fight the humanity side of you. That's why God put himself in humanity so he can understand the fight of humanity and give us a word called repentance. Flesh is dangerous. And when I found out that flesh knows that it can't go to heaven, I figured it would never be on my side. Flesh is going to always ask for the wrong thing. Because the Bible says flesh and spirit are an enmity. They're enemies with each other. That's why Paul said the things that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the things that I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, who would save me? And sometimes we give people that don't go to church a wrong presentation of us. We in a fight for our lives. It don't, it, it don't get easier over here. It just gets doable. <laughs> It's just doable. Why? Because we have dudamus. We have power. 
Remember now, the old you is still there. You have access to the old you. But once you get the Holy Ghost, you get power to override the old you. But you can tap into the old you anytime you get ready. That's why you can still cuss. I'm talking to about 40 people up in here. That's why you can still drink. That's why you can still lie. That's why you can still steal, fornicate, pornography. Because the old you is still there. You have access to the old you anytime you get ready. But the Holy Ghost gives you power to override any desires that the old you try to put in your memory. And then you can tell the old you the places I used to go. I don't go no more. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. He changed my walk, changed my talk, changed my appetite. It is in this season that you can win. Listen, this altar is open. The altar is open because you need to know that you have been traumatized, you have been done wrong, you have been lied on. These things are facts. You don't have to prove to nobody that you've been wounded and hurt because the Bible says a man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So you don't have to convince me that you've been hurt. What you need to do is not let hurt rule your life. And so we want to pray with you because your past is trying to summon the old you. And that is not who God died for. He did not die for the old you. He died for the new you. That's why he called it born again. Listen, we're not going to hold you long. The altar is open. We need you to come. This shit, this, listen, these type of messages, they got your name written all over it. You have to stand up and be able to tell the devil you will never have control over my will again. And I need power because I've been frustrated. I've been disappointed. I've been hurt. And I got to get past that because it's going to cause me to act old ways. And, and I don't want to be that person again no more because I've come too far from what I used to be. It is in this season. It is this season. It's this season that I need change. The altar is open. Won't you come? Let me help you. It's about five of you that just need to come to the altar and just let us pray for you. The Bible said that man should always pray and not faint. Bible said there be any sick among you for them to come into the elders of the church and let them pray for you. They lay their hands on you and you shall be saved. This isn't the time to be shy. This isn't the time to, to second guess. It, it takes a real man or a real woman to be vulnerable and say, God, here I am. I yield my life to you. Make it happen in my life. I've tried it and I failed at it. So, Lord, take my life. Mold me and use me to what you want me to be. Once again, the altar is open. If you have not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the missions of your sins, this is a good time for you to go down in a watery grave. The Bible said, according to John 3, 3 and 5, unless a man born of a woman, I mean, unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you can't even see the kingdom of God. There's some restrictions here. And I love God because he doesn't operate in great areas. He said, I would rather for you to be cold or hot. But if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. 
doesn't operate in gray areas. Listen, for you that are on live stream, we thank God for each and every one of you that are out there. And we said something or done something or saying something uh, that moved you into a place of repentance. Do me a favor and email us at office, excuse me, at pray for me at totaldeliverance.org. That's pray, the number four, me at totaldeliverance.org. Send us your prayer request and we will pray with you over the phone. If you would like for somebody to pray for you over the phone, then email us that same address at pray for me at totaldeliverance.org with your contact information. Somebody will call you and pray with you over the phone. If you just joined in and found yourself a part of what we're doing here, and you want to be a part of our virtual ministry until you're able to come into in-house worship, then email us at office at totaldeliverance.org. That's office at totaldeliverance.org. With your contact information, somebody will call you and walk you through the process of becoming a part of our virtual member until you're able to make it. If you'd like to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the missions of your sins, then email us at office at totaldeliverance.org where we will take down your contact information and call you and make an appointment for you to be baptized in the name of Jesus. For you that came on late and missed the opportunity to give, there is a multiplicity of electronic ways for you to give. Choose one and know that it will go to the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Until then, God bless you and God keep you, which is my most earnest prayer. And have a Jesus-filled day. Know that God loves you and we love you. And do me a favor, love on someone else. And as always, we love the babies. Nonetheless, be blessed.